Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. Just a couple of days ago, I did a new video, but I was standing under an umbrella answering the questions that I was getting of, my gosh, my bees, it's raining, are they okay? So I came outside to talk about bees and rain and what happens to them and shared with you that if it is raining and pouring down rain, they're not, you're not gonna see a lot of bee activity. They're gonna find shelter in your habitat or crawl into your nesting block. And then I flipped it around and I showed you a whole bunch of bee bums and bee faces poking out. Well, today it's a gorgeous sunny day and I came out to check on my bee house and it is buzzing with activity. So I thought I'd show you um, my bee house on a sunny day. Uh, remember I released 2,000 bees out here on our property. We have a couple of huge big leaf maples um, that are a big fun for, source of food for mason bees. So uh, let me flip this around and I'll show you our little bees busy at work. This is what they look like. Busy, busy bees. As you know, they're going to find that mud source, which you'll see traces of mud on the bottom of your nesting block or bottom of your um, house. And they're gonna crawl in that hole with that mud and they're gonna cap it with mud. And then mama's gonna go get pollen and lay a pollen loaf and then a tiny egg and then cap that with mud. Well, she'll do that, you know, seven, eight, nine times. I uh, did a video of what are your baby bees doing? And there were 12 in one of those cells. Well, then they cap it off with mud and that pr protects it from birds and any other predators that might get to it. But these little bees are only gonna live for about six to eight weeks. And then I like to tell the kids at school, they go and find a really pretty flower and they fall asleep forever and ever. They're young kids that I work with sometimes. So, um, but yeah, they only live about six to eight weeks and then those little babies will spin that silk cocoon. And then September, that's when you'll mail the nesting blocks back to us. So if you're not seeing a lot of bee activity, it's been your first year, second year, third year, we mark your, your block with scent mark. But sometimes they just love your habitat so much that they just wanna go lay babies. If you have a log with a bunch of woodpecker holes, if you have um, siding on your house that they like to go under, they don't chew wood, they um, won't harm anything. But if you just have a habitat with a rock wall or uh, raised beds or anything that has holes for them, they've just found other um, places to lay their babies, which means the following year you'll have even more more babies in your yard. So don't get discouraged. Um, I know a lot of people love having their, to see their mason bees working in their nesting block. Uh, and don't compete with your family or your friends that, oh, I have two and you have zero and you know, don't compete. It's not about that. This program is about releasing solitary bees back into our habitat. They're gonna pollinate, they're gonna enrich everything that they touch, and then you're helping your solitary bee population. So um, if you did wanna try the following year, some people move their nesting block and they have better success um, the following year if they move their black house to a different location. Maybe it's a sunnier spot, maybe it's a different source of food. Um, you can't move it now. You have to wait for the new season to do that. You can't move it once it's established. Um, but you know, the big factor in usually all of this is our weather. Our spring weather is always unpredictable. We never know when we release our bees, if it's cold, if it's wet, if it's gonna be rainy or windy. So that's always a big factor on um, bees coming back and bees habit, you know, coming back into your house. Um, oh, I got questions about the, um, the tubes here. So I thought I'd answer it on this video. Um, we work with a lot of research teams all across the country. Um, we've shared videos on some of the research studies that, that we've been doing and partnering with. Well, those tubes are UC Davis's research study, Abigail, I'll link the video below. When we were out at her bee lab a couple of months ago in Sacramento, um, we have a whole bunch of volunteer hosts, thank you for volunteering to be a part of our research, um, that have placed these tubes at their homes. And she's gonna go unravel them and study the pollen and urban pollen, what kind of uh, food are they using in residential homes. And then she can also study the male to female ratio and all sorts of other factors that she can gather in her data and her research. So once she has that research done, I'll share all of that with you. Um, but today I just thought I'd come out and show you what busy bees are looking like in uh, our large bee house. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email at info at rentmasonbees.com, uh, YouTube channel, or um, yeah, just follow us on our Facebook page or website. So thank you, happy pollinating, bye.